I think I now understand why Qualcomm decided to boost the number on their new flagship processor. As CS, Qualcomm just gave us the full list of specs and details of their new Snapdragon 888. We have some new CAD renders of the Galaxy S21 that really don't leave anything to the imagination. And Ming-Chi Kuo is back at it again, giving us a better idea on when to expect the new Apple Silicon MacBooks. I'm Jaime Rivera, and uh, I think that this weather is going to push me into getting sweaters instead of t-shirts. Not a bad idea. This is Pocket Now Daily, powered by Qualcomm. Stick around to learn more about the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 5G mobile platform. As usual, we start today off with deals, and we actually have some for the M1 MacBook Pros because why not? The latest M1 MacBook Pro is currently $50 off. That leaves the 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of SSD model in space gray for $1249. Sadly, we don't have any deals for the Air at the moment, but we do have deals for Samsung products. Believe it or not, the company is making the trade-in deals even better, starting once again with the Galaxy Z Fold 2, which is at $925, and you get $120 in Samsung credit for those purchases. You can get the Galaxy Note 20 line for as low as $220, the S20 line for as low as 365 and yeah those note deals sound like if they're probably planning something but probably the craziest deal is the Galaxy S20 FE which is just 115 bucks and you get the $120 Samsung credit in addition to a $30 e-certificate Again, all of these are trade-in deals, and yes, you do need an eligible device. But all right, moving on, the Google Pixel 4 is 281 off. That leaves the entry-level model for $518 shipped. We also have more deals on other Pixels, the Galaxy Watch 3 and others in the description. Now, moving on to official news, let's now shift over to Slack because right now I seriously wish I was a software developer. Last week, some rumors sparked up hinting that Salesforce was planning to buy the company. Well, they just made it official through a press release. Salesforce just acquired Slack for $27.7 billion, and it looks now like if they're gonna be integrated to their Salesforce cloud. Now, for those of you that use Slack, that are probably wondering what's going to happen to your service. Well, the current CEO, Stuart Butterfield, will continue to lead the company and the transition is expected to conclude in the second fiscal quarter of 2022. Once this is complete, Slack will become a full operating unit of Salesforce, allowing them to offer a unified platform for connecting employees and partners to customers as they will be integrating Slack to their workflow, quote unquote. I just find that shocking that my least favorite way to communicate is worth so much money. But anyways, yes, I know. We also wonder if the service will continue working after they make the shift to Salesforce, or if the pricing will be the same, or if anybody could just come up with a better competitor. Come on, guys. Now let's move on to Samsung accessories, particularly the Galaxy Buds Pro, which have been making a lot of headlines. We showed you how these were already certified by the FCC and that the Pro feature would be active noise canceling. Well, now we have some new renders from none other than Evan Blast that show us both the design and the case. And as the previous leaks claim, they pretty much bring the same design as the Galaxy Buds Plus, but the case looks like the one on the Buds Live, if that makes any sense. Now, speaking of this case, it looks like if they're gonna bring a 472 milliamp hour battery, but we have no details on playtime or how many charges it actually provides. Again, we should expect these with the Galaxy S21 series, and their main feature will be ANC, a better ambient mode, and a richer listening experience. Of course, we wish that Samsung adds other features to sweeten the pot, but honestly, so long as they keep the price tag or a similar price range to what they currently have, plus the battery life, I think that's enough of a selling point. And moving on to Apple and their roadmap for Apple Silicon and mini LED displays on Macs, we now have Meng Shi Kuo chiming in, so things start to get interesting if you're wondering about devices and times. According to the latest research note, Kuo reiterates that we should expect two new MacBook Pro models equipped with an all new form factor design and they will launch in 2021. He also mentions that we should expect a new and affordable MacBook Air in 2022. Of course, all of these will bring Apple silicon chips and a mini LED display. Kuo also claims that Apple will be able to offset the increased cost of mini LEDs in the Macs thanks to their Apple Silicon chips being significantly cheaper than Intel solutions. Mini LED displays are also projected to see pretty high shipments with MacBooks being their main driver here, probably because iPads are rumored to move to OLED next year. 
Apparently, MacBook shipments will grow by 100% with up to 35 million units per year. If the M1 MacBook Pro and MacBook Air are any indication of what to expect, like can you imagine more power in addition to mini LED displays and their power efficiencies? Like I totally understand now why we didn't get a refresh on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. We're getting really close to the possible launch date of the Samsung Galaxy S21 because, I mean, the leaks just continue to get more intense. Well, about a month ago, we got the first CAD renders from OnLeaks, and now we get some from the different source. Now, these renders are from the Galaxy S21 Plus showing off the new design. We see a flat display with a punch hole at the front with slimmer bezels, of course, and at the back, we get to see the new triple camera array, which reportedly consists of a 12 megapixel main sensor, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 64 megapixel telephoto. Now these renders show a silver variant, which we hadn't exactly seen before, and they got a pretty glossy finish if you look at it. To recap, we're expecting the S21 line in mid to late January, rocking a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 or the latest Exynos, up to 16 gigs of RAM and all the bells and whistles you could expect. I guess the only question left is if you actually like the design, because I'll tell you this much, it's unique. I, I find it enticing, we'll see. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with everything we wanted to know about the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 5G mobile platform. For starters, thank you to Qualcomm for sponsoring this segment of the video. Let's get right to it. Yesterday, the company pretty much teased the launch of the Snapdragon 888 5G mobile platform at their tech summit. It's built on the more efficient and powerful five nanometer process, implementing 5G, Wi-Fi 6, and Bluetooth 5.2 for enhanced mobile experiences. It brings the third generation Snapdragon X60 5G modem, which enables 5G in all flavors with speeds of up to 7.5 gigabits per second. It supports global 5G multi-SIM for international roaming, and again, it delivers industry-leading power efficiency at 26 tera operations per second. The new Cryo 680 CPU delivers a 25% boost in CPU performance, while the Adreno 660 GPU gives you 35% faster graphics when compared to the previous generation. The new Spectra 5 580 ISP is actually a triple ISP for the first time, which brings a new low-light architecture for brighter pictures. It supports Rec 2020 color gamut for photo and video capture, up to 10-bit color depth for photo and video, as well as HDR HEIF. You also have 8K video at 30 frames per second and slow-mo 720p video at a crazy 960 frames per second. It supports Dolby Vision 4K video at 120 frames per second and HDR 4K video with portrait mode, which sounds pretty slick. Snapdragon Elite Gaming also brings way more responsiveness and game rendering at up to 30% thanks to variable rate shading. Again, 14 OEMs were announced to use the platform, with Xiaomi, Oppo, and Realme being some of the first. Let us know in the comments down below what do you think about the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888? Do you like what you get on the specifications? Do you think it is the future? Because in my case, I'm really excited over what's coming, but obviously we will have to wait until next year to get devices that are powered by it. So stay tuned and let us know what you think in the comments. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also follow us on social media as our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me complain about the cold. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.